July 14th, Milwaukee. Dear Kathy, we saw these weird little eels at the Denver Zoo. They look like some kind of aquatic plant. I'm recording this voiceover in a mall, hence the Muzak. Free air conditioning and access to electrical outlets. It was so hot last night that I almost lost my mind. It's a mistake to try and live in this part of the world without at least a bedroom air conditioner, but here we are. And hence, here we are sitting in a mall. There are college-age missionaries wandering around and asking to give people surveys about their faiths. Brianna talked to a couple of them for a while. She was much kinder than I would have been. Remember this thing? I've never used the frame-by-frame -frame capability before. But I may have run out of film by this point, I don't know. My footage counter is broken. I'm working on a documentary about Vinny. I got the idea for it when you and I met up with him in Chicago and he showed you all his black box sketches in the coffee shop across the street from the library. I really wished I had a camera on him then and I've been trying to recapture some of that mad intensity. The way he completely commits to an idea and dives into it so deep that he's never seen again. Um, but over time, these creatures had their own understanding, but then like language broke down, language built up again. Uh, one creature from this planet over here met with this planet over here. We spent a couple days with him last month at his parents' Earth ship outside Colorado Springs. It's made out of shredded car tires covered in adobe. He let me film him doing a series of paintings. There were chickens everywhere. I love chickens so much. I feel like I understand them. There was also this baby turkey who was an absolute diva. I've spent all summer playing with my circular polarizer, and I've decided that I've been a fool for shooting all these years without it. It's now a permanent fixture on my rig, totally worth the half stop or so of light that it steals. Thanks for your video, by the way. It looked so beautiful there. I'd love to see it for myself someday. There's a robot piano downstairs that's conflicting with the Muzak. There's a robot piano downstairs. There's a robot piano downstairs. It's conflicting with the Muzak. Our shindig was really great. I wore a body mic just to appease my compulsion to document everything, but I forced myself to stay away from my camera all morning, just focused on making pancakes. We kept the batter in a soup tureen that, as it turns out, was a wedding gift to my parents, who were also married in Grandma's backyard in Ohio in 1976. Afterwards, we went to Avos with Evan and Greg and our officiant, Claire. I'd forgotten all about the sheer quantity of macrame in there, and there was a bizarre mural that I've never really looked at before. What's the deal with the forest baby? It's uncanny. <laughs> that whole weekend was excellent. Not only the ceremony, which went off so much more smoothly than I envisioned, but the next few days that were a collage of breakfasts with friends and wanderings around town, and Rarely have I ever had my heart more warmed than when I sat back and watched my old friends laughing and joking with Brianna's old friends and cementing themselves into something like a provisional family. I'm also finishing up a documentary about my great-grandma Tracy, based on grandma's recollections of her. I got my last little bit of interview footage last month and now it's just a matter of assembling it into something that works. I keep saying that I'm going to write a narrative short, but then I don't. I keep saying that I'm going to write a narrative short, but then I don't. Make of that what you will. I do have an idea for something that I think might be important. And for the past few years, ever since I started at WIT, really, I've been struggling with the problem that I feel like there's very little of relevance that I, as a straight, cisgendered, white male filmmaker, can say to anyone. But this feels like it could be a thing. I outlined it while I was sitting here by the Poudre River. Brianna and I drove up for a picnic on one of our last days in Fort Collins as a way of consoling ourselves when we realized that we weren't going to have time to camp at all. I have this paranoia that there's a latent sexist Nazi asleep in every white American man, even the most progressive ones, even my friends, 
even me. And someday that racist fucker might just wake up. I've seen him yawning and stretching in people I know, and I'm becoming more and more paranoid about it. I've been thinking about how true darkness hides in humor, how saying, I didn't really mean that, usually means, yes, I really meant that, and the ways in which entitlement breeds contempt and eventually hatred. It's a road movie, but that's definitely feature material. Where are those concise little high-concept ideas that make great shorts? I'm trying to get back into the habit of biking every day to and from my studio. June in Colorado was a month of sedentation and overeating, and now that I'm back in Milwaukee, it's time for some serious muscle pain. Earlier this summer, I house sat for one of my professors. He lives in a beautiful old house on the west side and has a hilarious cat named Colonel who is very fluffy and doesn't really know how to play. He's also a houseplant maniac. I think I counted 75 different potted plants in his house. I was going through old footage recently and I found this shot that I took at Prospect in Kenilworth when we went to dinner with your parents back in 2010 at the conclusion of the disastrous play that shall not be named. It's a weird little crease in time. That's my studio there, seven years before it was my studio. Six years before I even knew that UWM had a film program. I think even before the film program was in that building. I don't really remember who I was then. Here's the same spot today. I hope you're well. Give my best to Roman and Odarka. Sincerely, Andrew. Brianna says hi too. Hi, Kathy.